my channel. Today I'm going to be sharing with you what is in my changing bag for a four month old. So just to give you a bit of background on changing bags, I was adamant I didn't need one. I thought I could just use a big tote bag and I would put everything in there with my day to day stuff just like I would do normally. Why would I need a specific nappy bag? And that I managed with that for about two or three weeks and then it was just, it just became a nightmare basically. Everything was jumbled together. I never knew really what was in there. It took me forever to prepare it. So um, eventually it came to the crunch when my husband tried to change Sid when we were out for lunch one day and was like, please, 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 just buy a nappy bag. Like, buy a changing bag, a good quality one that's simple to use and you know where everything is. So my friend had a pack pod and I had a look at that and I was sold basically. So my pack pod is a Murano and it's in navy. It cost £99. Um, the fabric is this really nice, um, it, it's white clean fabric, which was a must for me because I'm messy enough on my own, never mind with a baby. So I, I was adamant I needed to be white clean. It's got short handles and then a long adjustable shoulder strap too. So those are there. Um, and I'll just go ahead and show you what's in here. So in the, this front compartment here is where the pods are. So each of these pods contains a different thing. So the grey pod is the changing pod. So in here, it just zips all around and it's got, it's really easy to use, really tidy. It's got different sections for everything. So in the changing pod, I have got some nappies. I've got four nappies, oh, five nappies. Usually I carry four or five with me. It's better to be safe than sorry, I think. And nappies are so light and they're so slim that actually it's no, not a big deal carrying around more than you really need. Um, I've also got some nappy bags, scented ones. I have got some baby wipes. Um, these are Pampers Sensitive Baby Wipes. Now, I did a lot of research on baby wipes and I was adamant I was going to use water wipes because they are so pure and I didn't want to put anything with chemicals on, like on my baby's skin. Um, and I started using them with Sid. I mean, I used cotton wool and water for a good few weeks, probably like three or four weeks, just because their bottoms are so tiny and it, they just don't really need a, a big old wipe on them. And um, then I started using the water wipes and he got a nappy rash. Now, I don't know if it was the wipes or it was the fact that I just moved on from using water, but I didn't go back to using them. I went back to using cotton wool and water and the next time I tried wipes, I used these Pampers Sensitive and he has been fine with those. So I just stuck with what I knew then and carried on using them. So that's what's in there. I then have two different kinds of nappy cream. Um, again, not wanting to put chemicals on Sid's skin, I am a huge fan of this Burt's Bees diaper ointment. Now there's two Burt's Bees ones. One's a two-in-one, which isn't as thick. This Baby Bee um, diaper ointment with vitamin E is it's a little bit more expensive than Pseudocreme, which I know a lot of people will use, but it's as thick. It's the same consistency as Pseudocreme, but it doesn't contain any chemicals. And Sid's had a little bit of rash once or twice and I, it wasn't down to the, it, it was more down to the fact that I had changed nappies, I'd tried some of the um, Aldi brand ones rather than the Pampers ones and things like that. So it's on, two, on a couple of occasions I've steered away from this and I have used the Metanium Everyday Barrier Ointment. This has got some paraffin in and it's a little bit more heavy duty. This is actually a free sample I got, but I do have um, big bottles of it that I use at home, but I just keep the free sample in my nappy bag because it's so stinky and easy to carry around. It doesn't weigh me down, and I can just keep that in there all the time just in case he ever has a nappy rash. Uh, next in here is sanitizing gel, because you never know where you're going to be when you're changing the baby. And also, now since it's getting a bit bigger, I found that I put him on the changing tray in the toilets wherever we are out and he has little hands are everywhere and I'm thinking ah please don't touch all this stuff so although I don't really usually sanitize his hands because I'm not sure about what's in that um, I normally do them under the sink I think as he gets a bit bigger I will be using that on both him and myself and the last thing I've got in here that is not to do with nappy changing it's to do with me is um just a couple of spare breast pads just in case I've either gone out forgot to put them in or I need some more um, I'm still breastfeeding so I just took a couple of these in and carry them around just in case so that is what is in my changing pod. Now each of these pods has got Velcro on the back. So if, for example, my husband is taking Sid to the park, he doesn't want to take the whole bag. He can just take this bag, or, or indeed I don't. 
you can just take this part of the bag and you can velcro that onto your buggy or your pram and you've got everything you need in there. So the next pod is the feeding pod. Now this has got very little in because I am breastfeeding Sid. Occasionally I will uh, bring out um, an express milk bottle and sometimes he doesn't take a um, dummy or pacifier, he spits it out, but I do tend to carry one around because sometimes I just think anything's worth a try, you know, when they're crying and crying and you can't stop them or he's desperate to be fed and I just need to tide him over five minutes while I get to the next cafe or whatever. Um, but this pod is temperature controlled. It's like a little esky or like a, a cool, cool, pot, cool box inside. And it also has this, which is like a little bottle cooler. So you just wrap your bottle up in that velcro it in and that just makes sure that it remains at the temperature it was when you put it in there so yeah just to show you inside it's the same size as the change of pod so it's really big and it's definitely going to come in useful going forward when I need to be carrying around food for Sid or you know anything like that that I need to keep cool and again it's got the velcro fasten on the back put that back inside the other thing the packer pod has in here is there's a, there's a pocket at the front there and this contains your changing mat. So that's there. And that you can get out, so it's really easy to get out and you can use it when you are out and about. And then it just folds back up. It's got a little bit of Velcro fastening it and slots back inside the front. So, that just all fits back inside. Now, in the main part of the bag, it's got this big long zipper look across the top. So in here is where I keep all of the clothes and things like that, spare clothes, etc. for Sid. So I have got a couple of little toys. This is uh, a mom, um, it's for teething. I don't really think he is teething yet, but he likes to chew this. And so I carry it around with me. It's got a clip on so it doesn't fall out of his buggy. And then another one of his favorites at the moment is this Peter Rabbit little rattle he can grab hold of that and he loves chewing its ears and its arms so got those two in there I have a blanket just a cotton blanket this one is from the white company it was a gift for Sid and I love the print on it but I carry that around because sometimes if um, he's I, I've got his car seat in his buggy wheels the sun comes around from a funny angle and it'll be shining in his face I tend to use that just to loop it through the handle and keep them in the shade and I just think there's numerous uses so it's light it's it's thin so I carry that in there as well um, I have also got two bibs so it is super dribbly at the moment these are tummy tippy um, dribble bibs I learnt my lesson with bibs I bought some cheap ones they don't work they either absorb straight through onto his clothes or the, the stick runs off or the dribble runs off them um, so I invested in, well, they're not super expensive in any way, but, you know, they're more expensive than the ones I've got from Primark, um, but these are well worth it. So I've got those. I've got two muslins. So many uses for these. Definitely need those. Then clothes-wise, I always take two changes of clothes. So I have two just little white vests. So two of those. I have one baby grow. Case I'm changing him. Usually I put him in little clothes in the day, but you know, if we're at baby massage or something like that and I want him to be comfy, I'll change him into his baby bro. And then I have one little outfit. So this is a little pair of trousers. I love these trousers. These trousers are from Bonds in Australia. Anyone who's lived in Australia or um, been there probably know Bonds. They do super cute baby clothes. Um, I ordered a load online. If you spend $100, which is about 50 or 60 pounds, then they do free shipping as well. So it's well worth a look. And then I've got a little top in there for him too. So that's his like day clothes and some jammies if he needs them. I have a little cotton hat. Then I carry two pairs of socks and two little pairs of mittens because he is sucking and sucking his hands at the moment and he makes them sore. So if he starts doing that, I put his little mittens on. Ah, so what else have I got? And then we've got the bits for me. So then for myself, I've got hand cream, I have this Clinique uh, baby tint chubby stick. I have a pen. I have a Burt's Bees lip balm, must have. And some band-aids and some chewing gum. And a hair bubble. Probably don't need a demonstration of what a hair bubble looks like. I'm sure you have a clue on that. 
And last but not least, I have this Lucas Pawpaw ointment, which again, if you've been to Australia or you are Australian, you will be familiar with. This has multiple uses. I only ever used it as a lip balm prior to having Sid, and since I've had him, I mean, it says on the back, a local topical application for boils, burns, chafing, cuts, cracked skin, gravel rash, splinters, open wounds, insect bites, and nappy rash. So basically anything. I put it on his little dry hands as well, because, you know, it's, it's completely natural. So that's in there. I think actually, if you ever wanted to get hold of any, I think they sell it on Amazon now as well. So yeah, that's everything that's in the inside of my bag. And then there's also, just not to forget to show you, there's a little pocket here. It's a pop close pocket, you can see in there. It's actually really deep. And I will tend to chuck my phone in here and things like that, which I probably shouldn't do living in London, but um, it's usually hooked onto the buggy and it's facing the buggy, so I always feel like it's kind of safe. And the pocket's actually really deep, but sometimes I think I haven't got my phone with me because I haven't stuck my hand in far enough. But that's a really handy, easy access pocket. Um, also for security inside here, on an elasticated thing, there is a, a clip as well if you wanted to clip your wallet on or anything like that. Or, or anything, indeed. So, there we go. Wow, it's a lot of stuff in this bag. So I hope that was helpful. If you do have any questions at all, then please leave them in the comments below or you can contact me on Facebook or Twitter or even Instagram. And I'll be happy to answer any questions you might have. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like and subscribe and that way you won't miss any updates from me. And if you've got any friends that you think might be interested, then why not share the video with them as well? Okay, well, I look forward to seeing you here again soon. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.